Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Both diagram labelling and flowchart completion questions come up regularly in the listening test, so you need to know how to answer them, and that's what you'll learn in this lesson. The lesson includes sample questions, strategy and tips, a practice question, the answers, and some vocabulary tips. In diagram labelling questions, you'll be given a diagram of a process, an object, a structure or a machine. And you must either fill in the missing labels or complete notes within the diagram. You could get almost any topic. Examples of diagrams from past papers have included a beehive, a soda can, a fire extinguisher, a ferris wheel, a zip fastener, a solar heating system, an undersea turbine and soil layers. So you can see that the subjects are very varied. As long as you have a good strategy to follow, you'll be able to answer questions on any subject. In fact, students generally find this one of the easiest types of questions to answer, because the graphic and the existing labels give lots of clues as to what the missing words might be. Here's a typical question to give you an idea of what to expect. I'll be using this example to practice the strategy and tips I'm about to show you. Flowchart completion questions, on the other hand, show the steps of a process. The process will have a start and an end, with several steps in between. It could be about almost anything that can be broken down into stages. For example, the outline of a lecture or essay, an application process, the stages of a training course, or a short manufacturing process. The graphic in this sample question shows the three stages of a project to design a water treatment system. Like most flowchart completion questions, it occurs in section 3, where the recording will be a conversation between up to four people set in an educational or training context. You'll have a short time to prepare before the speakers begin talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. Read the instructions carefully, paying particular attention to how many words you're allowed to write for the answer. The instructions for our sample diagram question state that you must write no more than three words and or a number for each answer. If you write more than three words, your answer will be marked incorrect, even if the information you give is correct. Other questions might ask you to write no more than two words, or only one word, so be careful. Don't lose marks over silly mistakes like this. Next, read the labels and title. Learn as much as you can from them. The information you get will help you to understand the diagram and give you clues as to what the speaker or speakers will talk about. Here's a diagram from our practice test. Pause the video and spend a few moments looking at it to see what you can learn. The next preparation task is to try to predict what the answers might be. This will focus your mind on what to listen out for in the recording. Occasionally you'll be able to predict the actual word but mostly it's one of these things that you'll be able to determine. The type of information required, such as a name, a number, or a percentage. Or the type of word required, for example a noun, an adjective, or a verb. Any clues you can get will help you to understand the recording and identify the information needed for the answers. Have a go at predicting some of the answers in our practice question. Pause the video to do this, then have a look at my predictions on the next slide. Here are my predictions. Answer 23 will be a verb. Answer 24 will be a number. And answer 25 will be a noun. In all types of listening questions, you need to listen out for synonyms and paraphrasing. These are something else that you may be able to predict. This is another quick task that can be done in your preparation time. Scan the information on the diagram to identify key words that are likely to be paraphrased 
and think of some synonyms or phrases that might be used. For example, the word studied or examined might be used instead of analysed. As you're listening to the recording, remind yourself that you're not only listening for the exact words used in the diagram, but words and phrases that mean the same thing. We'll look at how the information in our practice question has been paraphrased when we review the answers. Before the first speaker begins, there will be an introduction in which a narrator will tell you what the recording is about. For this question we are told, you will hear a part of a seminar entitled Understanding the World's Oceans, given by a climate scientist. The first speaker will then begin the talk or conversation by introducing themselves and the subject or purpose of the talk. This will help you to understand the context and give you more detail about the subject. Here's the first sentence of our recording. Thanks to all of you for coming along today to hear about how the robotic float project is helping with ocean research. You can see how important it is to listen carefully right from the start. The answers will come in the same order in the recording as they're listed in the question. So for this question you'll hear answer 23 first, then answer 24 and finally answer 25. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in a random order. As you're listening to the recording, watch out for distractors, as the examiner may use them to try and catch you out. A distractor is a word or a phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So, you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. The project was launched as a collaboration between scientists from five countries, but it has now expanded to bring together experts from 11 nations. It was expected that the device would work effectively up to a depth of 1,000 metres. However, accurate results are being returned from two whole kilometres down in the water. Funding for the project runs out in March 2022, although we expect it to be financed for a further two years. The use of but and however are particularly common distractors, but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information, so be alert for them. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, Take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. You now have the opportunity to practice using this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. Pause the video, listen to the recording and identify the answers. Write them down so that you can check them later. When you've completed this practice activity, continue the video. I go through the answers next. The section of the recording in which you'll hear the answers to this diagram question begins 1 minute 55 seconds into the recording. Listen out for the lady in the audience saying, that's impressive. I've included the first part of the recording, for which there are two note completion questions not covered in this lesson so that you can hear the introduction and understand the context of the seminar. To hear the recording, click the link in the notes below this video titled Float Project Recording. Here are the correct answers. The words in brackets are optional. Pause the video while you check them against your own, then we'll go through them one at a time. Answer 23 is activated. Here are the diagram label and the section of the recording the answer appears in. The sentence in the recording is The operational cycle goes like this. Each of the floats is dropped in the ocean from a boat at a set point and activated from a satellite. The examiners have been kind here as the language is almost identical in the diagram and in the recording, with no use of paraphrasing. 
the diagram reads dropped into ocean and in the recording it's dropped into the ocean and by satellite is changed to from a satellite so they're very similar answer 24 is 50 kilometers or kilometers but you could also have added the words average around about or approximately here are the diagram label and the section of recording this answer appears in. The sentence in the recording is It stays at this depth for about 10 days and is carried around by the currents which operate in the ocean at this level. During this time it's possible for it to cover quite large distances but the average is 50 kilometers. The information in the diagram is paraphrased. The words average and distance have been repeated, but travelled has been paraphrased in these two phrases. Carried around by the currents, cover quite large distances. Question 25 has a range of possible answers. Here the diagram label and a section of the recording this answer appears in. Audience. So what is it actually recording? Scientist. Well, at this stage, nothing, but as it rises to the surface, it collects all sorts of data. Most importantly, variations in salinity, that's salt levels, and the changes in temperature, a bit like underwater weather balloons. This section of text contains a distractor, but, which might have confused you. In answer to the questions to what the float is actually recording, the speaker at first says nothing. He then goes on to explain when information is recorded and what that information is. If you were listening out for the keyword salinity or a synonym, which you could guess would come before the answer, you should have been able to identify the answer when it was spoken. This is typical of how examiners try and catch you out with distractors, so beware. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Now practice using this strategy with other similar questions from past papers. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon. Goodbye for now.